let's see a demonstration of automatic jitter analysis using the jitter wizard that provides software clock recovery. So we have here a serial data signal. You can see if I just press stop that you have edges in various positions, various width pulses. Are these each of these edges in the right timing position? We really don't know. We need to compare them to a reference clock, but there's no real reference clock. It's embedded in the serial bus signal. So we can use the jitter analysis to recover a clock in software, then do a comparison of every edge, find out how much timing error there is in order to do jitter analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and press run, and I'm going to get thousands of edges on screen. Now, right now I'm at 500 microseconds per division. How many edges are there? I'm not really sure. Let's make a measurement. I'm going to select a pulse count measurement. How many positive pulses are there? Well, there's about six and a half thousand. That means there's about 13,000 edges that we're going to be, be performing timing measurements on. So let's go into the jitter menu. There's a dedicated key on the front panel it says jitter. And then this is called the jitter wizard. It assists you in setting up a jitter measurement. The first thing we can select is measurement thresholds. And we'll just use the defaults. We'll perform our jitter measurements relative to 50%. Then we can add a measurement. And there's various different types of jitter. There's data TIE. TIE stands for time interval error. Clock jitter. In period jitter. Period to period jitter. The most common is data TIE. So it's going to measure the timing error on all the data edges. Next, it automatically went to the clock recovery menu. We can do this relative to a constant frequency clock or a first order PLL, phase lock loop, or a second order PLL. Let's just do the constant frequency clock. Say OK. OK. Now, how do we want to view the, the jitter? We can select measurement histogram, measurement trend, and jitter spectrum. Those are the three different views that we have of jitter. So let's press stop. And now let's take a closer look at these three different views of jitter. Let me spread this out. Here you can see the data edges again. This purple waveform here is the jitter trend waveform. It's plotting timing error on the vertical axis versus time, same time as the serial signal on the horizontal axis. And right away I can see from this that we have some sinusoidal uh, modulation going on on our signal. And also the sort of bluish plot down here, this is our histogram. It plots it statistically. And I can see that it's bimodal, which sinusoidal jitter or modulation would give you this uh, bimodal distribution of jitter. If we had just random jitter, you'd see what would look like is a Gaussian distribution. The third trace is the jitter spectrum. Let me change the scaling on that one so we can see it more clearly. And I've made some measurements ahead of time, and I know this sinusoidal modulation is right around 20 kilohertz. And let me turn this signal off. This is the spectrum waveform, and if we do a search on it, frequency peaks. It finds a peak at exactly 21 kilohertz with an amplitude of 10.4 nanoseconds. Now, we could correlate that 10.4 nanoseconds of jitter back to this 
measurement trend waveform, and there, there probably is some correlation, as well as we can go to the back to the histogram menu, and we have all sorts of statistical information. We have about 53 nanoseconds of peak-to-peak -peak jitter. We have a standard deviation of about 10.9 nanoseconds. We have a max reading, a min reading, and so you can get various um, specific analytical information about the jitter and you get various views. Now let's take one more view of the jitter. Let me press run again. Let me turn my waveform on. And let's look at this as an eye diagram. And with the eye diagram, again, we could change the clock recovery if we like. Let's just leave it where it was and let's select auto setup. And there is our eye diagram. You can see the jitter right away in the eye diagram relative to the recovered clock. And it also automatically measures eye height and eye width.